Hello chess lovers, Soren here and in this video I want to share with you a brilliant attacking game played by the 8th world chess champion Mikhail Tal. His opponent is Israeli chess player Michael Stein and the game was played at 1973-74 Hastings tournament. If you remember, previously I've already published a game where Mikhail Tal crushed his opponent in Sicilian defense by relying on a trick which earlier that same year Wemis World Chess Champion Nona Gaprindashvili had acquired. In case you missed that game, I will pin the link in the comment section. But meanwhile, here is another brilliant example where Mikhail Tal's theoretical knowledge helped him to gain an easy victory. Without further ado now, let's get started with this fascinating game where we are going going to witness a brutal king hunt. Tal was playing with white pieces and he opened up with e4 to which Steiner responded with Sicilian defense c5. Honestly guys I have no idea why is it that Mikhail Tal's most outrageous attacks can usually be seen when playing against Sicilian defense. This is something which his opponents should have taken into consideration but Ellis we have another Sicilian defense and now let's see how is Tal going to punish his opponent. Knight f6, knight c3, a6, black goes for knight or variation and Tal answers with the main line. Bishop g5, e6, f4, knight d7, queen f3, queen c7, white castles, queenside, b5 and an aggressive move by Tal, bishop takes b5. He's giving up his light squared bishop for blacks to queenside pawns. This is a line which before this had been seen four times and it was Latvian chess master Alvis Vitolins who was using this line successfully and before this he had won two games with this line. In our game we have a takes b5, knight takes b5, queen b8 and e5 with a double threat. White both attacked black knight and also at some point queen takes a8 can be played. For example, if you Capture on e5 with your pawn, then white can play queen takes a8, and this is going to be an easy win for white. That's why after e5, black played bishop b7, neutralized all the possible threats from the long diagonal and attacked white queen. Here we have queen e2, white queen is coming to support the pawn on e5 and also wants to jump on c4 square. D takes e5, well if we move like knight d5, then in this case, White can easily crush his opponent by going for rook takes d5. If bishop takes d5, then knight takes d5. And if e takes d5, then white can go for knight c7 check. This is an idea which earlier we had seen in Gary Kasparov's game. The idea is that if queen takes c7, then e takes d6 discover check. And black is in trouble, guys. White is winning. Let's go back, that's why after queen e2 we have d takes e5. Now comes queen c4 with a knight c7 threat and bishop c5 with which black is blocking the c file. But after queen c4 the best continuation is considered to be bishop e7. You know, up to these days this line is being played even at the highest level. From time to time the player with the white pieces is testing opponent's theoretical knowledge and I have to repeat again that in here the best move is considered to be bishop e7 but still even with bishop c5 there are not too many problems you know later playing accurately black can equalize the game here we have bishop takes f6 g takes f6 and a mighty exchange sacrifice by tal rook takes d7 i have to tell you that after this brilliant victorious game various spectators and participants in the tournament including his opponent hastened to offer their congratulations but tal modestly disclaimed any credit for the victory. The thing is that an identical idea had been employed by Vitolnish in the USSR a couple of weeks before the Hastings event and Tal simply follows that game. Now after king takes d7 white wants to munch the bishop that's why black used his chance first announced the check from e3 and only after king b1 played king takes d7. Of course Mikhail Tal is not the player from whom you can expect Rook d2. In that case, castling king's side could allow black to solve all the problems. That's why we simply have king b1. King takes d7, rook d1 check, and bishop d4. Well, in the game played by Alvis Vitolinch and Yuri Anikaev, in here black played king e8, which is a better continuation than 
bishop d4 and the game went on in the following move order where Fitolish managed to crush his opponent in the most brilliant style. Let's just follow that game very quickly and see how white finished up his opponent by playing rook e1, white cut black king's escaping route and already the threat is queen h6 check. In that game h5 was played but after queen g3 black resigned. Now if a move like rook h7 then queen d6 check is coming followed by queen takes c7 with an easy win. The queen is untouchable. But I have to tell you that after rook d1 check the most accurate defense starts with king e7. If queen b4 check then king e8. And in this line, despite the fact that white is managing to win the bishop on b7, the players have equal chances, though the position remains highly complex and double-edged. But in our game after rook d1 check, in this game we have bishop d4. Here we have f takes e5, f takes e5, knight takes d4, e takes d4, queen takes d4 check and despite the fact that white is a rook down, black king becomes an easy target for aggressive white pieces. Black pieces are misplaced, you know, are like out of the game while white pieces are starting to chase black king all over the board. Let's have a look how Mikhail Tal finished this king hunt. Here we have h4, rook a5. Black wants to somehow switch into the defensive rook, but there's no way out, you know. Already there is no escape from aggressive white queen and rook. Queen g5 check, king h2, queen h4 check, king takes g2. I, you know, all the time I love to repeat that when you're attacking all your pieces should join the attack and in here, yes, after king g1, the last piece, the knight also joined the attack and we have it, a checkmate on the board. How do you like this checkmate, guys? In case you were considering queen h2 check, don't forget that there was a Queen on b8, that's why, knight e2 and we have a checkmate on the board. Another brilliant game by Mikhail Tal where he crushed his opponent by relying on his theoretical knowledge. In the end, as usual, a chess puzzle for you where the task is to find the mating line for white. The puzzle is actually very simple and I hope that you can find it very quickly. I will wait for your answer in the comment section. Thanks for watching, here are more suggestions for you, feel free to check them out as well, I will see you in my next video, take care.